So to begin practicing with figure drawing, you're gonna do a lot of repetition. And the way you wanna set it up is pretty rigid. So you're gonna divide your paper into a bunch of different sections. You're gonna basically have a top section and a bottom section, and that's gonna subdivide your paper. The top section is divided in half and then into eight, into eighths at the top. So one eighth of this section is the head, uh, one quarter uh, is then uh, divided up and you have the abdomen uh, taking up three quarters of the top and then you have the legs at the bottom. And this makes room for the three major masses which are the head, rib cage, and pelvis. So when you do a basic figure drawing, you're not going for complete accuracy. You're first going for just essential human proportions, right? So the typical proportional schematic is eight heads tall, and then the middle of the body, it's the pubic bone. The rib cage uh, is about um, one and a half heads tall, roughly. So what I would suggest is looking for some reference material or getting your friends to pose for you. Um, it's not particularly hard to find uh, figure drawing references online, and uh, usually friends and family are willing to let you snap a photo. Um, so as you draw, what you're looking for is creating the essence of the pose. So you notice that every time I draw, I start with the head because that's an extreme. That's probably the most important part of figure drawing. Then I trace down the spine or the center of center line on the front of the body. Fill in with legs to kind of understand where the weight bearing leg is, and then go back in with the rib cage. Um, after that, I usually go in with the pelvis and then add any detail to the arms and limbs to kind of finish out the pose. So what you're looking for with the head isn't really a circle or a particular oval. You're looking for the essence of how the head is posed and how, how what kind of attitude it has. On the second pose, you'll notice that I have that it's facing me. So I have a center line to work with. Um, and if you have a closed figure, you can just use um, the line of the button down shirt and that works pretty well. Um, one of the things you notice about the weight bearing leg is that it tends to be on an average standing pose. The weight bearing leg tends to be directly under the crown of the head. So if you were to drive a ramrod down the figure, it would hit somewhere on the weight bearing leg either usually around the ball of the feet, sometimes uh, back on the heel if the pose is kind of rocked back on the heel. Um, you can get a little more accurate with the shape of the pelvis or the shape of the rib cage if you can see those indicators. Um, the rib cage creates a couple of surface landmarks at the V at the bottom of the rib cage, and usually you can see some of the bottom ribs. You also notice that one of the tricks that I do is draw a line for the neck and put a little tick mark at the hollow of the neck um, usually you can see that on almost everyone when you, um, no matter what kind of pose they're in, so when they're facing you. So if you put a little tick mark, that just kind of reminds you uh, where you are, gives you a little anchor. Um, you'll notice that none of the lines are straight. And that's because the body isn't straight. You know, even standing up, well, even what we call standing up straight, the spine is still curved, every bone is curved. and you don't want to straighten out the body like a stick figure, otherwise you're going to go into a pretty unrealistic situation. You'll also notice by now that I've drawn and redrawn each pose. And that's because every time you advance the drawing just a little bit further, you kind of understand what you should have done in the first place. So I don't like to ever give up when I'm doing figure drawing. If there's a particularly difficult pose or one that I'm having trouble with, um, then I'm going to sit there and reobserve it at least one more time just to be sure that I've got a better attempt going at it. You'll notice that um, the feet generally aren't planted exactly on the same line straight across, and neither are the shoulders. So what you're looking for are lines that aren't straight, um, things that don't line up, and any kind of asymmetry in the pose. And that gives you a lot of uh, interesting subject matter to work with. 
So in this pose, the head is kind of tilted back. So to get that tilt, I kind of drew the, the V of the jaw for the head, and that immediately indicates that the neck lengthens out. Um, as you progress down into the, into the legs um, and, and limbs, don't avoid the feet. That tends to be a pretty common beginner thing, is to avoid hands, feet, and head. Um, even if you do a basic indicator of a foot, like I'm doing just a quick line or a curve, that's better than not putting it there at all. Um, the longer you avoid these details, the more difficult they're going to be to put in in the end. So be honest with yourself about where you are with your drawing and just kind of um, accept the fact that it's not going to be great the first time and you just need to make an attempt. So as you as you move along and put more time into this, your attempts will get better and better. And that's just a normal thing. Um, so you also notice one of the landmarks you can use, and I put a tick mark there to show it, is that the elbow kind of hits right at around the bottom of the rib cage. Um, very, it might hit a little bit lower on, on female figures than male figures, um, but you can use the same essential set of proportions for male and female. It doesn't matter that much in the early stages. So as I go about reobserving, I want to change the shape of the head a little bit, uh, change the angle of the of the jaw and the V, um, and as I reobserve, I want to make changes that I knew that kind of bothered me about the previous one. One of the things that bothered me overall was that the head wasn't really over the weight bearing leg, uh, so the figure looked just slightly off balance. And so I'm going to try to correct that throughout this process. Um, so again, you're focusing on the, not necessarily the limbs, the extremities, or the correct appearance of the figure. You're focusing on uh, balance, motion, energy, and everything else that comes into the gesture of the drawing. Later on, uh, your second stage is you go in forms. So the head, ribcage, and pelvis are your first given forms. Um, and if you think of those as kind of three-dimensional egg shape or box shape kind of forms, that'll help you out a lot. So that's why we spend so much time doing structural elements, drawing boxes, cylinders, spheres, cones, because really what we're working on uh, with those basic things are uh, sections and components of figure drawing, uh, because that's where most people want to take it, uh, to be able to draw figures and people and do kind of illustrations or whatever that, or whatever that you want. So um, you'll notice here that I even drew in some fingers and stuff with this figure so that I just kind of know where I'm going to take it. Um, after the basic layout of the figure, uh, I may want to go back in and kind of develop it just a bit further. So what I've done here is indicated the corner of the pelvis, and I've begun to indicate where the knees are. So here I'm going to use uh, a basic organic cylinder for the leg um, and use a little bit of anatomical knowledge there. Um, for the calf and bottom of the leg, I'm going to do the same thing. It's basically another cylinder. Um, and I'm going to make an attempt at the foot. So you see some ankle bones going out, the main uh, metatarsal of the foot, and then kind of the outer bit of the foot. Uh, so that foot kind of feels a little bit uh, more accurate, a little bit more grounded. I'm going to go over and do the same thing to the other leg. Generally, uh, in order of operations, what you want to do is go to your head, rib cage, pelvis after you establish the gesture, then go through and work on some major forms. And it doesn't really matter which form you start with, but you want to do one form, then the next, and go side to side, back and forth, and kind of work on the connective tissue. Um, because when you work side to side, you kind of develop a rhythm with it, and you understand the rhythms of the body a little bit better. Um, the next thing that you want to do is just kind of connect the head, the rib cage, and the pelvis. Um, and bean forms are usually pretty good for that, where you get a little bit of overlapping form. You can use a little bit of the contour. Um, you can use trapezius muscles to connect the neck and head to the shoulders, and thus to the rib cage. Um, you can use, again, cylinders for arms. Um, 
and you can break the cylinders down as many times as you want to kind of get some anatomically correct um, drawing happening. Um, you don't have to develop hands or feet or heads too much because you're getting into the range where on this size of a figure, it's going to be tough to get it pretty accurate, but you just kind of want to indicate. One of the things I've noticed is that I kick that leg out, the weight bearing leg out too far to the right. So I needed to swing it back to the left. And even though I've kind of drawn um, and developed the figure pretty far, I can still go back and, and make those changes. I can just go back in with a little bit heavier line weight and get that leg under the head. So have fun with this. Enjoy the figure drawing process because it's uh, pretty rewarding and highly entertaining.